So let's uh, finalize with the last talk of the session. It's on deep virtual stereo odometry, leveraging deep priors, uh, deep depth prediction, sorry, for monocular direct sparse odometry. And uh, it's a paper by Nan Yang, Rui Wang, Jörg Stückler, and Daniel Kremers. And the talk is going to be given by Nan Yang. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Nan. Uh, I'm glad to introduce our work, Deep Virtual Stereo Autometry. And this is a joint work with Rui Wang, Jörg Stückler, and Daniel Kremers. As we all know, that deep learning has swept a lot of areas in communication not only the high-level perception like classification and object detection, but also the low-level tasks like super-resolution and optical flow estimation. However, there is still one field where deep learning method cannot compete with classical method, which is, which is SLAM, or we can say visual odometry. It means to reconstruct the world from moving cameras and estimate the camera poses at the same time. In fact, in the large-scale outdoor scene, as you see in such a video, classical methods can only achieve good performance with zero cameras. Using a single camera, local methods cannot perform well on such an outdoor large-scale sequence because uh, the metric scale cannot be recovered from a single camera, and it, it will result in very large scale drift in the end. Here is an example of scale drift. And this sequence is taken from Kitty dataset. Uh, di direct sparse odometry is the state-of-the-art monocular visual odometry system. But you can see that uh, it still has a very large scale drift. Over the last two years, researchers have proposed a number of quite impressive deep learning approaches to visual SLAM or visual odometry. These are, are a few representative works most of these approaches tackle the problem with end-to-end -end trained deep neural network. However, none of these methods can outperform classical approaches in terms of quantitative evaluation on the established uh, visual odometry benchmarks, such as KT or TOOM dataset. In contrast, in this work, we propose a hybrid method which combines the advantages of deep learning and classical visual slam methods. Our method provides state-of-the-art performance on established benchmark. In fact, the performance of our molecular visual dumpy system is on par with the state-of-the-art stereo method, but with only a single camera. We achieve this by integrating deep learning-based monocular depth estimation into classical geometric methods. Deep learning can recover the metric scale of the depths from a single image because it can learn the prior knowledge of objects and the typical scene layout. The depth estimates are not only used for the in initialization of the new points, but also integrated into the optimization for the arrow function of visual odometry. To get accurate molecular depth, depth estimation, we firstly introduce a semi-supervised deep neural network. The loss function is a combination of self-supervised loss, supervised loss, and the regularization term. Our self-supervised loss is inspired by the work from Goda et al. And from one single left image, the network is able to predict both uh, the left disparity map and the right disparity map. Instead of using LIDAR ground truth, as Kuznetsov et al. proposed, we use stereo visual odometry to collect sparse data as the uh, supervision signal. In particular, we use the state-of-the-art stereo visual odometry system, uh, stereo DSO, proposed by Wang et al. We use this one to collect the sparse depth map. And in this way, uh, we reduce the cost of collecting sparse uh, labeled depth data. The regularization term is to deal with the uh, occlusion, uh, occluded area and the textureless area. For the network architecture, we propose StackNet, which is comprised of two subnetworks, SimpleNet and ResidualNet. Inspired by DispNet and FlowNet, both of them are fully convolutional neural networks with skip connections. ResidualNet learns the residual signal of SimpleNet and it gets 
additional clue like the warp image, the residual image, and the disparity map from SimpleNet. The final outputs are the admin, admin wise submission of the outputs from the two subnetworks. Let's firstly see the evaluation result of StackNet. We compare with the state of the art self supervised approach of Gauda et al. and the state of the art semi supervised approach from Kuznetsov et al. As you can see here, at the time of submission, we achieved state of the art performance on most of the metrics. In terms, of, in terms of qualitative evaluation, as you can see here, our approach can deliver better prediction, especially on the object boundary. As you can see, for example, the traffic sign on the red part of the image. To show the generalization capability, we also run our StackNet on Cityscape's dataset, and the model was trained only on Kitty dataset. You can clearly see that our network can predict plausible depth map, and it can still recover the shape of the objects, for example, the poles on the left image and the car on the right image. OK, now we have a deep neural network, StackNet, which produces two disparity maps of a stereo camera, but only from a single image. Then we want to use this to mimic a stereo setup in a monocular visual optometry system. How can we do this? The depth of the selected points on each new keyframe is firstly initialized using the left disparity map. Now we want to construct a stereo photometric arrow, but from this only, only from this single image. So we take the baseline from the training set of StackNet, and we project these selected points onto a virtual right coordinate. And now, if we want to construct a stereo photometric arrow, we need to get the intensity of this virtual red image. Here comes the red disparity map. So we back, back warp this virtual right coordinate to the original, original left image. So now we have a photometric arrow between these two terms. We call it virtual stereo term. And together with the other, uh, the other temporal photometric arrow term, we have the total pho photometric arrow. And we use Gauss-Newton method to optimize the arrow function and to get the refined sparse depth estimation and the poses of the keyframes. So this is another sequence from KT dataset. Actually, you can see that monocular DSO can actually deliver locally good 3D reconstruction. But the problem is that after long-term running, the skill drift is very large. After using the initialization uh, for, from the left disparity map, you can see that the skill drift is eliminated very much. But still, the accuracy is not very high. <coughs> now, after we adding this virtual stereo term, you can see that the Accuracy is, is improved very much. Actually, there's basically there's no visual, visual difference between the estimated tra trajectory from DVSO and the ground truth. We also evaluate DVSO on the training set uh, of Kitty with other state-of-the-art stereo methods. Blue numbers means uh, green numbers means the best performance, and blue numbers means the second best performance. Uh, TREL and RL mean translational error and rotational error, respectively. And uh, sequences with Carol simple means the sequence used for training stacknet, and the sequences with start simple means they are not uses, used for training stacknet. And you can see that DVSO achieves comparable result to the state-of-the-art stereo methods on both subsets of the sequences, but DVSO only use one single camera. We also submit our result on KT test set, on which the ground truth is not public available. DVSO, DVSO also achieves better results than stereo DSO on the test set. In fact, 
DVSO is the best monocular visual odometry system on KD benchmark, and its performance is on par with zero or LIDAR methods. We also test DVSO on a segment of Cityscape's dataset where the camera properties are totally different from the one from Kitty dataset. The red line is the GPS ground truth provided by the dataset, and the blue line is our result after performing the similarity, similarity alignment. Uh, DVSO can still deliver fairly good result. Um, recently, I also recorded a sequence around gosh deck where you are sitting in, and this is the street view. You can see that although the result is not as good as in the Kitty dataset, it still delivers reasonable depth estimation. Uh, for example, it can recover the shape of the uh, traffic signs, uh, the shape of the cars. And of course, we also run DVSO on the recorded sequence to deliver 3D reconstruction. And this is the sparse, uh, sparse uh, point cloud from DVSO. Uh, I hope you can tell that this is just the building you are sitting in now. And uh, actually, although we see that the depth map from the StackNet is not very accurate, but DVSO can refine the depth using the classical um, optim optimization method. Uh, yeah, this is the reconstruction you can see here. Yeah, to conclude, we firstly propose StackNet, a semi-supervised monocular depth estimation, but we do not use LiDAR ground truth, and it achieves state-of-the-art performance in KD dataset. We also propose DVSO, a monocular visual odometry system uh, which leverages the depth estimation from StackNet and achieves performance on par with state-of-the-art stereo method, but we only use a single camera. We think our approach is a promising direction to enable monocular autonomous navigation in GPS denied environments. If you want to discuss more in detail, welcome to my poster session. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is exciting. There's a talk, uh, question up here. Um, yeah. Hey, over there, on your right. Um, very, very good talk, um, and really, really good results. Uh, very impressive. Um, Godard. Oh. One, one difference with Godard uh -huh. might be that uh, Godard can train also with just monocular sequences, not mm -hmm. just test on monocular sequences, but train. Um, can your method also train on monocular sequences you and mean? be semi-supervised in the sense of you have part of the data set that's stereo and part is only monocular? So. I don't know which paper you refer to from Goda et al., but uh, from last year's VPR, I think Goda et al. proposed the self-supervised approach. And on that, uh, from that paper, it, he also trained on zero method, yeah. zero sequences. Yeah, I'm talking about the latest one. Sorry, you're right. Ah, so okay. So he can train uh, on monocular sequences also. Uh, uh, for now, no. We use the self-supervised laws, and uh, but I think it can be easily extended to monocular case because we can also estimate. Um, the, or we can also use the uh, poses from stereo DSO or from other stereo methods uh, as somehow a ground truth or use some robust, robust kernel to train the molecular sequence. Also using similar methods like uh, a photometric arrow between different frames and warp the, ref uh, warp the current frame to the reference frame to get the training signal. Okay, thank you. Nice here. <laughs> um, um, sorry, I didn't. Oh, here. hi. <laughs> um, very nice work. Uh, Thanks. One question I have: Why don't you use the mm. motion parallax from the successive frames to improve your depth maps? Oh, uh, you mean for the uh, network? During test time, yeah. So you estimate the depth. Oh. So why don't you use the motion parallax? Ah, uh, yes. This is a very good question. I think uh, this can be uh, extended work from us. And actually, I think this method can also be extended to an uh, online, online training, uh, let's say, uh, scheme, because we can also get the post estimation during running DVSO. And we can use this post 
and also the depth estimate from DVSO to, uh, in turn, to refine the stack net, uh, deep neural network. Yeah. Thank you. Is there one more question? Then let's uh, thank the speaker again.